Hello, and welcome to At Your End Step. My name is Morgan, and I'm here with Mike. Hello. And we have another fun-filled episode for you folks this week. Before we get started, I want to give a quick shout-out to all of our patrons. Thank you so much for uh, contributing every episode to uh, At Your End Step. Uh, we really couldn't do it without you. And um, if you are interested in becoming a patron, you can check it out at patreon.com slash at your end step. So we have a, a bit of a, a light show uh, this week. Not a not a whole lot happening. Yeah, like a laser light show. <laughs> I wish. So crank those seats backwards. So what plane would be projected on the laser light show? Huh. I mean, I, I so my my initial guess would be Meriden. Yeah, that's kind of where I was leading. A lot of sweet reflective surfaces, multiple suns for different colors. It's true. Um, so you get a cool, like, it's like spacey show there. I, I feel like Kaladish is the only plane that's come close technology wise to it's having like lasers. Actual lasers. So that'd be cool, but they'd probably be very deadly. So yeah, like, they'd be look, like, look at them, but don't get close. <laughs> they'd be real actual lasers. Yeah. Um, but no, no actual laser light shows, but uh, just a, a few things here in the community. And then, um, of course, we had our first big standard tournament, which we'll, we'll, we'll talk some on. Um, but the results were, uh, I don't know, not, not surprising. I, 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 think, I think there's a little bit to dissect there and some surprising for sure, decks. For sure. So, um, so uh, uh, first off, let's kick it off with the uh, community segment. So. Um, the first thing that we want to talk about is uh, we we you know had a long sort of discussion about uh, arena and some of the things that they're doing. One of these things being the the cat, the the pet that you can you can obtain, um, and it's you know designed to to be clicked on. Essentially, it does stuff when you click on it, and that's that's cool. It is a a, a thing that people uh, enjoy, um, but sometimes when you when you make these things that have effects on your opponent's side of the the, the field this one uh, you know opponent opponent's side of the screen um that may or may not cause them to get locked out of the game uh, due to one reason or another it, it becomes a bad thing and it becomes so much of a bad thing that if you are uh, abusing this sort of exploit that has been discovered you might get banned for a few days uh so um wizards has actually started to do that with people that have had multiple basically they, they have certain parameters that you have to meet you know you're not just gonna like click on it once and they'll be like banned for five yeah days. no if you were sitting there thinking like oh man i definitely like absolutely click on the cat right that's not you yeah these people are literally they keystroke it you know a thousand times in a match yeah you know and, and get them to so if you're doing that multiple times right then it certainly seems like a pattern of abuse yeah. yeah um so now they are aware of the, this th- being a thing that you can do. So they are going to implement a fix for it at a later date. Um, and the, the bands are just supposed to be as a precaution as being like, Hey, we know that you're doing this. Stop doing this. And then to the, the room as a, as a, as a greater, like we're going to be fixing this. You know what the easy way to fix it is N- not have it at not all. Not have it. Or just like you can turn them off. You can, like you, the player can turn them off. Yes. Um, then maybe you should because, they're worthless. Yeah. yeah if, you, they, if you like it, take a picture of the cat and tape it to the exact part of your monitor where the cat would be and then poke it with your real finger. <laughs> then you might get – or, you know, adopt a cat from a shelter, and like a real it. one. And, yeah, poke a thousand it. times a match. <laughs> it won't cause your opponent's you know, client to bug out, so that's something. It might eat your finger. It, you might not have a nice cat after <laughs> the, the end of this experiment. <laughs> um, but – uh, yeah, you can actually you you can turn off emotes, which will turn off the. Well, you can also, as far as I understand, under under your actual thing, you can actually turn off the pet stuff too, like specifically the pet stuff. Gotcha. Emotes will turn it off from the clicking, but you can actually turn them off, um, which is good. You don't want you don't want turned on pets. That's that's a messy situation. And this one it's... and this one's like fiery, so like yeah, I don't, I don't know, know what, what, that I don't know what means. it looks like. So, um, as Bob Barker would always say, please spay and neuter your pets. I guess real life or digital. I don't know how that works. I think you tried to spay the digital pet. You cut a hole into your monitor. Your monitor? Yeah, probably a bad idea. And this no, is, I, this is one from where I neutered the cat. What cat? The one on Arena? <laughs> the digital, the digital cat? Yeah. I'm not smart. <laughs> uh, but, you know, he can't get banned now because he can't click on it anymore. I guess. I guess that's it. It's like, I don't know, like... You definitely deserve to be banned. I, I get, I, there's some people who get frustrated with like, well, if the if the bug is there, that's there to be exploited. However, like you are, 
it, it's more than just like exploiting a bug to do something is it, it feels different than this, which is you are winning because you are actively destroying your opponent's play experience. Like their system is crashing and the the game is kicking them out because mm-hmm. of what you're doing. And that's that's a really gross exploit. So yeah, it's not it's it's not the greatest. Um and realistically like ex- even if you were like exploiting like a bug on motor or something like that, like I think like that's that's pretty gross as well. I, I don't disagree. Um I I always like I always get that weird look on my face. I've been playing some motor this week. I definitely cast like a Wrath of God and my opponent ha- or not a Wrath of God. I cast an Elishnorn. Uh, ah. Grand Cenobite. Uh, and my opponent um, sacked, in, in response, sacked a selfless spirit. And I was just like, what are you trying to gain here? Right? Like, I see those little things, and the- I think, like, only moto opponents do that. Right? <laughs> only moto opponents would think, like, maybe this will somehow not kill my board. Like, it could just be a bad player. Don't get me wrong. Or someone who just wants something to do. But whenever I see those things, it makes me feel like you're trying to exploit something. <laughs> <laughs> maybe it's just, like, a memory thing, like... This is like I should just, even though I know this won't do anything, like I should know what things I can do and it's do like them. electroshock because of it. Like <laughs> the poor guy in the beginning of Ghostbusters. I was listening to other people talk about how, like, uh, well, yeah, my opponent just like straight up on turn three cast timely reinforcements and got three creatures. It's like, oh, were they exploiting the bug? And it's like, well, I had no creatures in play and they were at a higher life total than me. So, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and say, yes, they were just trying to get three creatures. Uh, yeah, the uh, uh, Mike and I were, were talking about it, but the whole like combined queue for some of the events now it's just like, man, it's it's the wild west out there. It, it's it's oh man, it's a whole. I, I sent a picture to our Discord. I, this is a very side track conversation. For those who've listened to the show a long time, you know that I used to play Blue Light Gifts Tron a lot. Yes, I've been known for it, and I definitely rebuilt that deck on Moto because I don't know what to do in Modern, and that sounded fun. Uh, and I sent a screenshot of like just like poetry in like a, in text form, which was my opponent casting like voracious worm after gaining a bunch of life in a turn, and then me <laughs> casting day of judgment, and then them immediately disconnecting from the match. So they did make an eighteen eighteen voracious worm, which I mean, it gets counters on an equal amount of life you gain that turn. Yeah, but they were playing an aura that whenever it attacks or blocks, you gain four life. Mm-hmm. It was. Uh, was not optimal. Okay. Which is fine. It doesn't have to be optimal. That's true. But there was a queue for decks like that. So that those people didn't burn their tickets. Well. Now, granted, I just said I'm playing Blue Eye Giftstron. It's not a real deck either. I get it. Wasn't playing Voracious Worm. True. And if you were like, you're that person playing Voracious Worm and you're offended right now, you disconnected and had to be timed out for me to win. So I don't give a. Sh- I stopped it. You did. I stopped you it did. because that's bad manners too. I don't like it. So I guess we're just saying here, like, don't bad manners. You go to five day ban. <laughs> yeah. See, we, all, we 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 came back around to it in the end. I, I guess you could flip it around and be like, hey, if you like bad mannerings, people, you know, here's a free coupon <laughs> for five days off arena. <laughs> Enjoy your five days and come back at a in five days. Um, Please come back. <laughs> Uh, so the um, only other thing that we wanted to uh, touch on community-wise uh, was uh, something that we mentioned a little bit last week is that we do have San Diego Comic-Con this week and that we're, we are going to get more information on what archery is going to be and that's going to specifically be Saturday night at San Diego Comic-Con. So um, I don't know if this is going to like play into people's um, like fatigue uh, or anything like that. Um, I, I, I obviously don't think we're getting cards. We are getting information about the set, so likely the name, the the setting, maybe something about the um, you know inhabitants uh, of the setting, what what you know kind of creatures and things like that we may see, uh, and maybe some like general theming. But I don't think we're going to get anything specific wise like mechanics because usually they like to show mechanics with cards. Um, that might be a little bit different if it is like a snow set. So if it is called Heim, because then you no know, one mechanic will likely be snow. It's snow. Um, but cool. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, but I don't. I don't know. Uh, do you feel like? Are you excited about knowing what the fall set's going to be, or are you still like, let me enjoy like what we've gotten so far, and I don't want to hear about anything else until later on. You know, I really can't tell. I, well, I can tell for sure that I'm certainly not as excited. Okay. Um, the intrigue is not here. I don't feel the same affinity for the buildup that I even felt last year. Um, 
and, and a large part of that is the amount of things we've gotten right in a row. Now, granted, this set is still pretty far off. Um, yes. And it's certainly interesting we don't have a name or anything like that, but um, I don't know. I feel tempered. I feel like, huh, okay, like, yeah, more magic cards. Do you think, like, you'd be... Do you think you'd be more excited if you didn't know... Um, if you didn't know it was going to be, like, a new plane? Is that... Do you think, like... No, a return to a plane doesn't do anything for me right now. Like, gotcha. unless, it, unless it's literally Dominari again. Just take <laughs> me right back. Just put it right into my veins. Um, no, like, I think, like... I, I don't know. The places that are high on the list to return to right now aren't sets that I have a lot of attachment for. Mm-hmm. Um, there, I mean, I... I I played. I did probably the best I've ever done in Magic during Theros block. It's true, but like uh, Theros is just not a plane that I think has a deep well. At least how they worked with it before. Mm-hmm. Um, despite needing to get Elspeth, we need to get her. Got to get her. Um, and like, I can take it back. I, here's what I'd be excited about. I'd be excited by Frexia. That's what I'd be excited by. But again, like I, that, that's me. I, I sound I sound old and curmudgeonly saying that. Like, give me Dominaria or the threat. Directly from Dominaria. Uh, or just like Koth. Hashtag Koth Watch 2019. Yeah, 2019. Um, Probably going to continue to 2020. We get it. We understand. Hey, it's Candlelight Vigil at this point. <laughs> what if the first art they show is just Koth I, I have, standing on a cold mountain? I just... That would be wild. <laughs> that, I'd be excited immediately. That would change everything At for the me. very least, like our, our podcast as a, as a whole would rejoice. Koth, Twelve people around the world would be so happy. <laughs> Koth and Garrick. Arm in arm. They have joined together. They are, I don't know, let's ship it, madly in love. <laughs> they have found their mountain. And it's, that's, I, there's a movie called Cold Mountain, but I don't think that's what this is about. <laughs> but I don't want to make, like, I don't want to make the generic, like, Brokeback Mountain joke, because that's not what I mean. No. But I want them to, like, they both have things they need to do, but for one set, they found their mountain. I, I see. I see. I, I'm writing a better magic story than they are, so. I, I mean, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> Um, but Garrick's like a bad guy now. But that's the whole point. It's, like it's, he like, has to go back and keep being bad. He he's literally got like he's holding the demon at bay, and what's holding the demon at bay is love for Koth. For Koth. And Koth also shoved metal bits into his brain <laughs> <laughs> to keep the hedron plugged nice and tight, nice and, nice and firmly <laughs> implanted. That's uh, there's some like weird under te- like subtext with that. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> if anyone really enjoys that, but. I do, whatever. Uh, but I, I mean, in all seriousness, like I, 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 I think I feel the same way about that set. And, I, and I'm throwing this like outlandish thing because one, I know they have plans for Garrick. Two, I want Koth to come back. Three, it probably will be Snow. Um, but like, I, I don't know. I want to see them do something bold. And maybe that's unfair because War of the Spark ostensibly was bold. Yeah. Um, and and like what they did with the story. But I feel like there's so many little things that just like honestly pissed me off about it, and like. Yeah, we still haven't done the third section of the book nook yet. I'm assuming you haven't finished the book yet. Oh, I finished it. Oh, did you? Okay, well, we'll I, coming I soon, it. I guess. Yeah, it's coming but soon. But, like, you know, as we as we talked about it in those, you know, quick – give you a quick peek behind the curtain for those of you who aren't Patreon you know, subscribers. But the book's not very good, um, at least as far as how it's written. Yeah. And – um it, there, you know, we're getting all this prequel stuff now, which is cool and enjoyable. I yeah, and I've heard it's good. I heard it's I mean, it's worth the read, even though the form that it comes in is less than desirable. Yeah. I'm, I'm honestly waiting for pretty much all of them yes. so I can read it at once. Yeah, um, but like, it, it is it is just frustrating that like even with that bold thing, they still. So I, I don't. Know, I just want to see one cohesive vision of something bold, and like. I like top down sets. I like what Mark Rosewater has really done with magic design that way. You know, Innistrad was still just a high point. It's just amazing. But Theros was not it was not good to me. Like it, it was not it was just not as story coherent and like top down in a frustrating way. And like I think like we talked a lot about Kaladesh, like upsetting some people and being frustrating as a top down set. So I, I I mean if we do call time, are we gonna get just like are we gonna get like Marvel Thor? Are we gonna get weird appropriation? Like like what are we gonna get? So I and, and that's unfair because it's not it's not even been announced yet. Confirmed, so yeah. I guess it's like I this is the most speculation I've done on it because I've not cared. Yeah. Now part of that could be the way they did this announcement. Maybe we are gonna get something really bold because this is the first time we've gone this long without knowing a yeah. false set's name. Right, you know, for the last few years we've gotten announcement day dumps where we've gotten names for sets way, way in advance. That's true. Um, so maybe it is going to be a way, but I guess like after seeing the recent modern bannings and like seeing, um, I, like I don't know, it just I want it. I need it to grab me. I need it to shake the you know a little bit of this dust off because 
who boy, am I burned out a little bit? Yeah, I mean, like, not not to mention, just like, I think it, you know, we're at a point in our lives where there's just like a lot of stuff going on, like outside of magic. Oh, sure. And I think it's just hard to be um, maybe as invested as we we were, like it, you know, previously. Um, it, that, that's just you know part of growing up and like just becoming. Uh, the one of the best quintessential cards against community cards. A busy adult with, <laughs> with too many things to do, um, uh, and uh, uh, you know that's that's kind of what I, I feel like. I feel a lot more of like life in general, just kind of you know detracting from my yeah. excitement of just, being able to be excited just to, to spend... slowly turning to dust as the world uh, turns. You know, we we all we, we, did, that happens to everyone. I'm hearing the song. Wait, did you specifically quote a Blink One Eighty Two song? <laughs> I. I maybe this is growing up. Like I, I like I'm fairly certain that's the exact line. I mean, but yeah, that's the that's I, part I'll of get it. Done a new, a new brown, and um, I, I, that's certainly part of it. But and like the way that I play the game has we've talked about this a lot has changed. You yeah. know, um, you know, for my wife and I bought a house. Uh, so literally outside of the Invitational and Gen Con. Uh, I I'm, I'm just not playing weekend events. I played the MCQ. That was it. I'm not playing mm-hmm. weekend mag- magic events at all. It's not a priority, and it just isn't. So there's a disconnect there for sure. I, I don't necessarily think the cards are worse. Modern Horizons like frustrated me, but like I've been proven wrong by at least how powerful the cards are. And like I don't think there's any. You know, we were a little bit bored by the core set too. But again, I don't think there's anything inherently wrong with the cards. I I I just I sat down today and played like six hours of brawl <laughs> <laughs> with a with a friend who's you know who's on vacation and. Uh, you know, all the we were excited about the new cards. We we were we were excited to try out these new cards, but I, there's still something about like there is a malaise the longer that you are involved in these games. You know that like this is just the Goliath the sets rolling out. And again, I, I I'm going to point to the fact they really did abuse their set release schedule recently. And um, this I think needs to be this needs to feel like a, a pure direction because if if their announcement tonight is like here's the set and here's also the dual deck that's coming out with it and here's Commander this and here's this and this I'm gonna go. God, just let me focus on a set for a second. Yeah. Because I know we're going to get Commander. Pre- well, Commander comes out, what, September? Yeah, something like that. So it'll come out before the fall set. So we'll get those previews first. Yeah. You know, so it's just, they are a company that needs to make money. We've said this a million times. But there is something for just letting your product stand. And it feels like ever since Arena caught fire. And I know they planned some of this stuff a long time out. But some of this has definitely been piled on. You know what I mean? Like, they are feeling the need to, okay, the player base is excited jump on it keep them latched on but like yeah. there's also something to be said that like you just you can't throw so much stuff at a wall it, you know it, it, it just can't so i don't know I, i'm excited because mark rosewater's passion has never wavered and i trust the guy complete with magic but I, I hope i'm hoping for something bold you know what i mean i am uh, and I, i'll be very honest i don't know that snow was bold so no it's cold you have to you have to roll one d4 nice Psych damage yes. Uh, if you haven't listened to uh, uh, Dungeons and Daddies, it's very good. It's not not a BDSM podcast, but I'm fairly certain I my the first person I saw tweet about that was Ashlyn Rose, the you should the cosplayer, mm-hmm. and I was like, okay, and that's like three or four more people, t- and I was like, okay, I'm going to subscribe to this, and then it sat there subscribed to for about two or three weeks, and like I was like, all right, I'm going to listen to this now. It's just. Yeah, it's just a magical time. So. Mike told me to to listen to it because we we are uh, uh, fairly big Adventure Zone fans and yes. uh, other McElroy property fans as well. Um, yeah, we're some some good old Mackle boys. Here. We, we we certainly are, and um, so we we we've listened to our, our fair share of Let's Play podcasts. I like to listen to Friends of the Table, even though it's kind of it kind of dense, um, but. Um, uh, so but we're we're uh, we're we're fans uh, to say the least. And uh, this one, I'm only on like just the beginning of the second episode, but it's uh it's pretty funny. It's great. It's pretty funny. Um, but yeah, so I, I I'm excited for what you know at least tentatively excited, but like it, it only need to be something pretty interesting to make me go to make me not, not look at it and just go huh. eh. like here's 300 more cards. And like I'm not gonna stay up with like a regular standard set. Arena's already changed how I think both of us stay up on standard sets. Like. Most of the I own standard cards. A lot of it's based around brawl. Yeah, um, it, really, it just really is, um, and it will probably continue to be that way. But I don't know. I don't know anymore. I, I keep saying I don't know. Like I'm trying trying to be derisive of this because like they've obviously planned it this way for a reason and mm-hmm. let this name simmer for so long. So I'm assuming that like. They are they're really hyped about the piece of art we're gonna see and the name we're gonna see. Uh, and I'm hoping I'm hoping I feel something, anything. 
<laughs> Probably another Cards Against Humanity card to be perfectly honest. <laughs> yeah, feeling, feeling something, anything. Yeah. Also, a tiny horse and geese. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I, I just like they, – they've really just – now I'm just feeling like I'm ranting, but they've they've, they've really ab- abused some of their property, and I, and I think about like you know Chandra is my favorite planeswalker. If you came into my home, you would see that I have an oversized Oath of Chandra card. True. I have a, a lithograph print of Chandra that was given to me. True. I have um, I, this one's not currently hanging up, but I have the game day mat with Chandra with a foil Chandra the firebrand. Like yeah, like like I I. I, this is something that I appreciate, and I enjoy displaying. You got a, a full sheet of Foil War of the Spark. Well, that's true. That's well, got a Chandra on that's it. That's got a Chandra on it. Got a Sh- I got the Chandra Funko Pop. It's the only Funko I have. There you go. So I take it back. I have a Jace. My brother gave me a Jace. Uh, but, like, yeah. but they fight each other. It's cool. <laughs> um, so like, like I'm the Chandra person, and I went, oh, okay, three more Chandras. Four more Chandras, actually. Yeah, it's a lot. It's just... I'm, I, I, I'm ready to see another Red Planeswalker. Cothwatch 2019. Yep. Yep. It's a love story. All right. You heard it here first. <laughs> you heard it here first. My yeah. gosh. If if I just pulled that out of the ether and it was just like like we just got like arrested. <laughs> like how did you know this? <laughs> the Watsy cops are gonna show up at our door. Well, it's, I, the only way we could have known it is some minority report like stuff. Yeah, so we some, some pre crime. <laughs> <laughs> some precogs done that uh found us out. <laughs> All right, so before we uh, jump into our uh, competitive segment, do you want to quick, give a quick shout-out to Comic Town? Um, again, uh, if you uh, are interested in checking out some of the other stuff they have on there, they do have a, a comic book podcast called Black, White, and Red All Over. You can check that out at wordofcomictown.com. And while you're there, you can also check out some of the upcoming events that they have uh, that are magic-related or, uh, again, their 25th anniversary is uh, coming around the corner. So um, there's a lot of stuff that's going to be planned for that. So uh, keep uh, watch on their website for more information. All right. Competitive. We had our, our first standard term. We did have a couple of uh, a GPs that happened over the weekend. They were all limited. So congratulations to the winners of those GPs. We will not be talking about them. <laughs> uh, we're going to mainly be focusing on the Star City Games, uh, as, as uh, Mike has uh, oh, aptly oh. And, oh. and correctly titled the uh, SCG Worcestershire Sauce uh, <laughs> open. Um, again, it was, it was standard. So we have a couple of interesting uh, kind of points to look at. Uh, the first thing I did want to – do you want to start with the, the, the top eight or do you want to look at the metagame breakdown? I want to look at the metagame breakdown first. I, I think it's interesting because, again, the top eight doesn't always paint the best picture. But I thought this was fairly interesting. One, the most played deck was Simic Nexus. Only, only by one copy, but it was still the most represented deck. And um, I find that just hilarious. I'm so glad it's about to rotate. But, man, am I just tired of that of that card in general. Um but also Simic Flash, which is a deck that really caught fire, like, this last week leading up to this event. Um, yeah. I, I have to look back. I don't know if it, did I have a top eight finish? I don't think that it did. Uh, I, I can't remember, but uh, I'll pull it up. Yeah. I can only look at one tab at a time on my phone. I'm very sorry. Uh, but then Orzov Vampires with eight copies. Mono Blue Aggro, eight copies. Team Elemental, six copies. Mono Red Aggro, six copies. Esper Super Friends and Esper Hero, both with five, so they're actually, like, you know, ten Esper. And then you have a couple copies of Gruel Agro, Simic Ramp, Rakdos Agro, Boros Feather, Naya Feather. A uh, copy of Jun Dinosaurs made it to day two and actually did pretty well in the event. Yeah. Uh, and uh, just a couple of other random stuff uh, that I thought was interesting. But, you know, it, we had a, a couple of you know, decks that we talked about, like Orzhov Vampires making making a, you know, a real name for itself. You mm-hmm. know, Team Elementals making a real name for itself. You know, I, uh, I pre-ordered one Omnath. One for Brawl. Because I was like, I think I want to build around this card for $5. So happy. That's a, yeah, that's a great deal. Um, uh, so uh, the highest placing uh, Simic Flash deck is 13th place okay. by Brando Dempsey. So just outside of top eight. Uh, so yeah, interesting. And there's like, now there's a Soul Tide version now as well. Um, it's actually playing the Pirate, the Poisoner, Direfully Poisoner and stuff. Oh, yeah. So, no, that makes sense. Um, but yeah, let, let's, let's look at the top eight here and talk about these decks. I thought it was, you know, a number of decks that... And a number of tribes that are about to rotate out. Yep. Having that moment in the sun. So, um, first and foremost, I just we're looking at uh, the top eight list on MTG Goldfish, which is a, a pretty good place to to get your lists. Sometimes um, it, not the best, but uh, this is actually a pretty good breakdown um, because it gives you the the price mm. of of the decks. And my gosh, like <laughs> if you are a a budget player and you don't have a lot of money to spend, this the first and second place deck are like. 
You dream to see this. Oh, yeah, 100%. It's $53 in first place and then $38 in second place. Uh, uh, the, that was like the Moto Ticks price. You can build Ross Merriam's mono blue deck for five, five ticks. $5. Five whole <laughs> well, tickets, but, you know, dollar dollar the yeah, ticket. Yeah, technically a dollar know, equivalent. It's probably not, actually. It's probably like, like a little bit of tax. Now. Yeah, whatever. Um, oh, yeah, I guess, I guess that's, that's true um, if you're buying it from a bot or something like right, that. Right, right, right. So um, the, the winner was Aaron Birch, uh playing Mono Red Aggro. Uh, she defeated, uh, as uh, Mike said, Ross Miriam playing Mono Blue Aggro. Um, and it, it feels like we're, we've gone back in time to a, a, <laughs> a different time and place. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it makes sense for, for Week 1, to be perfectly honest, to kind of see these two decks in the, the top two places because aggressive decks are great week one they they traditionally have been people are trying new and weird things and sometimes it just, it just doesn't come together um you know you have things like teamer which i imagine have a, a decent aggressive matchup but also have a three color mana base and also may not have as good of a matchup against uh, the the aggressive decks than they thought and and you know we see one in in, in the top eight here um but Again, you kind of never know what, what's going to show up and what people's exact builds are going to be looking like. Um, with looking at uh, Berich's, uh list, um, we, we see some uh, new additions of a card that we, we, we talked a little bit about, Ember Hauler, like the tiniest bit. Uh, we basically said it was playable, the, I think, the last time it was in Standard. <laughs> and um, it's actually replacing the, uh, the two-mana wizard, um, which, you know, obviously still playing... Um, Oh no, that's right. Okay, that's that's what they're not not playing the Wizards Lightning. That's the the, the obviously yeah, they're playing they, the, they did the shift. Skewer the critics and um, uh, she has um, this is Amber Holler instead of Yoshio Pyre. Yeah, exactly. So, so um, that, I, I mean that, that that is to set up sort of the marquee card in this deck, which is Chandra Spitfire. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so which is interesting because I do think the Lava Mancer or the uh, not the Lava Mancer Pyromancer uh, could do that too, uh, but you get to time it the way you want to. Um, Chandra Spitfire is an interesting card. I've seen a couple different lists that are going all into this card. So we didn't talk about this at all in our deck our thing. This is two generic and a red for a 1-3 flying elemental. It says whenever an opponent is dealt non-combat damage, Chandra Spitfire gets plus three plus zero on 10 to turn. So when you look at this deck, you know, and you have one of these in play, um, you ping your opponent with fire, Fanatic Firebrand. That's a trigger. Yep. Oh my gosh. I'm going to go so that's a paddling. Uh, <laughs> Ember Hauler, them. That's a paddling. That's a paddling. Uh, Goblin Chain World, them. That's a that's paddling. paddling. And any of your burn spells. Also a paddling. Also a paddling. So, you know, you have a lot of ways to sort of go off with this, and it being a flyer is pretty relevant. Yeah. Uh, when you look at like Team Elementals, for example, um, outside of Cavalier of Thorns, your flyers tend to get through. And maybe Hydra Crisis, you know, Crisis. But like, you know, this, this card can get through against a lot of decks. And, uh, all of a sudden, you're talking about turns that are just massive, just massive with this card. So, yeah, um, you sure. know, when you, you say mono red, you know, like, like, you know, Dave, you know, messaged our Discord, you know, former host, and he was like, hey, I know you're surprised, mono red one. And I was like, oh, okay, I didn't even look. But then when I saw this list, I was like, okay, this is mono red, but this is not what I pictured. I pictured literally the list that we've seen for a, a long time now. And this is pretty bold to play, you know, this many different cards and, and an entirely different card for the archetype in the Spitfire. So. Yeah, and like shifting like your ability to to literally like not play a bolt um, in exchange for Ember Hauler, yeah. and and you know, I, I guess you're still playing. You are. Critics. You're still playing Skewer, but it's not instant. I mean, it's certainly legitimate. not. And it changes. Things. Yeah, when you talk about things like Experimental Frenzy, which only one of, one in the main here with the other three in the sideboard, you know, this deck is trying to do something different, and was successful. Very much so. So, and um, you know, we see a, a deck sort of come back. With with you know um, something you know something we just haven't seen in a while that hasn't been good, which is mono blue, but uh, it, it shows you like how just adding a few new cards to you know this sort of list, I, again piloted by Ross Miriam, um, can really change how effective a deck can be. Um, you know you you ha- add things like Spectral Sailor is just like another one drop, another pirate. So you can, you know, um, play things like Lugas Dispersal pretty effectively now. And then you have sideboard cards. You have Aether Gust and the Cerulean Drake. You know, now traditionally one of the, you know, tougher matchups for Mono Blue has been Mono Red. And even though it was still triumphant in this, you know, matchup, um, I'm 
having the access to things like the Aether Gust and Cerulean Drake, I'm sure will was fairly handy to dis- you know, dispatching other moderate opponents throughout the tournament. Um, and, it, uh, you know, this is still a a deck that is powerful for the time being, while you still have some, you know, solid payoffs for, for having a lot of islands <laughs> in your in your deck. And um, I appreciate that all of the creatures, <laughs> there's no generic mana costs in any of the creatures. They're all islands. <laughs> It's fantastic. It's it's one island, two island, or three islands. <laughs> that you have to play. You know, there's no g- generic mana being cast for these creatures. <laughs> um, it's too bad you you do lose it in obviously the spells, but man, I uh, you know these kind of decks, uh, you know, are again it's another aggressive deck. It's something that's going to be disruptive, and I think like this is a, a deck that you can play if you like, are really expecting Teferi to be very good. Um, I, yeah, I, that's a big key. I, I, and that, that that can be something that can be said for a lot of the weekend, is there there were definitely a lot of times where we, we didn't see as many Teferis as we've seen previously. Yeah, and I think that's interesting. I, I think that I'll be, you know, we have Denver coming this weekend, which is standard. I, I'm waiting for Tefer- Teferis to return. Yeah. I, I, I just, like, when you look at this meta, like, you know, Mono blue specifically, but even the elementals decks, like yeah, Teferi still both of them still seem pretty good. So yeah. um you know, some of this is just players wanting to try new things, some of it's just you know, normal metagame shifting, but yeah, I I've played against this matchup when you have Teferi in your deck, and the games where you just land a Teferi kind of stopped this deck from operating. So for sure. um but you no, know, it was the right call for this weekend. You mentioned I want to mention some other things. You mentioned Cerulean Drake, which is great, but especially if people are going to these Chandra Spitfire builds, like Yeah. Yeah, sure. I'll block it forever. Um, but also unsummon only one copy here. Um, that's but, true. But a card that's that you know, came back in this set that uh, whenever it's printed, it's it's just fine. And you know these decks were already sometimes playing one to two like blink of an eye that sort of thing. Yeah. And you whenever you can shave mana in these tempo decks, it's such a big deal. Yeah. And I think like that's one of the like great qualities of the mono blue deck is like you can leave up such insignificant amounts of mana and it always be very powerful. 100 percent like like one of you look what you're representing at one mana in this deck. Like as, <laughs> so many for, things. Like Flash, you could have Spectral Sailor, Dive Down, Opt, Spell Pierce, Unsummon. This is too many things. I guess a lot of things. Now granted some of that's low impact, Opt's not gonna affect the board. Spectral Sailor may or may not impact the board. But like you still have to respect it at one mana. And at two mana, it's almost the entire deck. Because depending on the creatures you have in play, it's Wizard's Retort, Lookout Dispersal, <laughs> and Negate, all of the one-drops I already said, and Merfolk Trickster is a Flash creature. <laughs> like, And if you're in, a, if you're in a, like a sideboard game, it could be what? Because uh, Aether Gust it could is be, an instant. It could be Aether Gust. It could be Essence, Essence Capture. Capture. Like, it, it's, or Tail's End, which I think is a, a really interesting one of. Yeah. So. Um. Which is definitely like one of those those weirdo cards, but I heard a lot of people being like, oh, "I'm actually pretty impressed with this," and, and you know maybe just the upside of countering countering something like you know legendary uh, could could be like the 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 kind of effective thing the, about the, that. card. The fact that it counters like planeswalkers, but also like counters like some of the abilities they do, like I, I think it's pretty important because you know speaking of like big Teferi, um, you know, if your opponent's tapping five for that to try and get it, just like tuck like your Tempest Gin or something, you know what I mean? Or like they already have it or whatever, and you yeah. you, know, you you can do it to do some things, uh, which is interesting, but not not a card I'm super high on, but it's there. Um, let's talk. Uh, let's talk. One of the new uh, kids on the block here, third place Team Elementals. Yep, Team Element and Elemental, excuse me, piloted by TMNT, <laughs> piloted by uh, Chris Johnson, and um, we've we've definitely have seen a. A lot of different sort of variations of of these um, builds and these lists. Um, this one is uh, playing things like uh, Creeping Trail Blazer, um, which gives your elementals plus one plus zero, oh, and then you can um, it has an activate ability of it gets plus one plus one until end of turn for each elemental you control, so it can get pretty big. Um, it's even playing something like Overgrowth Elemental. Um, which I, is kind of uh, kind of surprising, but um, definitely makes sense. Works well with the the you know the all, the overall theme. Um, using a lot of uh, Chandra's as well. We have Chandra Acolyte of Flame as a four of, and then Chandra Awakened Inferno as sort of a um, you know the Awakened Inferno being a big mana you know sort of payoff. Always comes down can can always do something, and then um, uh, the the Acolyte of Flame making elementals itself is is fairly powerful well so it's important here too like so when you're looking at so most of the builds that are playing acolyte of flame are really looking to abuse 
like those elemental triggers. Yes. Right. So like obviously like if you have a risen reef in play, then making two elementals is disgusting. Correct. Um, overgrowth elemental also plays well with that because you sacrifice them; they don't get exiled. Yes. So you get to gain two life and put two plus and plus encounters on your overgrowth elemental every right, turn. Right. Right. That seems okay. Uh, it might be too cute because it's a three mana three two. Um, yeah, but it's it's certainly something interesting. Um, just to point out, like Awakened Inferno is a card of I've played. I've played a, a number of these elemental builds, not this one. I haven't gone with these aggressive builds. I've played some of the more mid rangey builds and some of the builds that are also playing like uh, Flood of Tears, mm-hmm. um, which I have named uh, <laughs> Brian Gottlieb's Big Tears, <laughs> uh, which is a weird molding of names, but I don't care. Um, but Awakened Inferno. When these in these elemental decks, like where you literally can minus three and not kill anything of your own, that's obscene in a lot of matchups. Yeah, and with like Le- I will say, Leafkin Druid is a card that if you haven't played with yet, is overperforming like aggressively. People are not playing enough removal to really deal with those creatures, and a lot of the removal we do see are things like even here, like Shock doesn't kill the zero three, mm-hmm. and it's so consistently tapping for two mana. Yeah, like it. it I it believe is, it. It is very so like you can just play your creatures out and. You know, then all of a sudden Chandra's here on turn four, turn five, and you start emblaming. It's it's tough to get around it. it it's just I, I like this deck a lot. It's solid. I also want to point out Cavalier of Thorns, uh, which is the only Cavalier seeing play, uh, which makes a lot of sense when you basically what's going on. Cavalier of Thorns though is showing itself to be really really powerful. So yeah, um, it just just being a five six, I think like the the, the power and toughness in obviously recurring like, recurring things from the of the graveyard when it dies is is powerful getting like advantage as soon as it comes in most of the time is really good um it, it, it may have been one that we were not very high on in the um well i think i think I'm, i know myself i missed the elemental el- element of it yeah that, guess, wow yeah. that was the, that's bad english i'm very sorry yeah i missed the elemental uh, you know aspect of it but the fact that it curves so well from risen reef omnath into cavalier thrones because now you get a trigger on your risen reef and you get a land trigger on your omnath so like I wasn't viewing it in that context. You know what I mean? I think I, I haven't seen other a lot of other decks that are playing it just to play like a five drop. You know what I mean? No. Uh, but in these elemental builds, it, not only is it a big creature, right? But it just like it plays so nice. Yeah. So and, and realistically, depending on your elemental build, you are you you have you actually have the ability to cast it right. Like green oh, green is a is a big well, commitment. And, and Leaf Kadru is a big part of that. Exactly. So um, you know you can't say that for the other colors that are, are trying that, that would be interested in playing these elementals they can't make that big color commitment 100 yeah you're absolutely right so um the, the only one that's seen any play with that has been cavalier of gales because it fits the other color here correct um the red cavalier mm, sorry but nope um but i i mean i think like these decks were you know even when we were like okay these are kind of interesting but i've started playing them on arena and like they're a lot more powerful than you think. And if you think of something like Living Twister, which was already seeing a fair amount of play in, like, random gruel decks. Like, it's a big stonewall for a lot of decks, but it's got a lot of synergy here. You yeah. know what I mean? Um, you know, you obviously you have the return to tap land, right, To because you throw it at your opponent. But when you have an Omnath in play and you, you don't have land for turn, well, you can just keep getting triggers. And if those triggers involve, like, land drop eight where you're just drawing a card well then you're just making sure you're doing that every turn like that's such a subtle synergy that you did it didn't exist with living twister before and it was already a playable card and now you know there it is yeah so i, I think it's uh, there's some cool stuff with these decks and i and i like this build a little bit better than some of the ones that were trying to play the was it the galloping whatever the one that makes the mix one one elementals and it comes yeah. into play like stuff like that i think like is a little too cute and th- this deck also might still be on the too cute side but i like it um uh, the the one notable thing I think is like missing that a lot of people have been putting into these lists is Nissa. Yeah, I, I like Nissa when these builds. Um, but uh, so I think it's you know kind of an interesting takeaway to be like, well, this build did have it is more aggressive and it was you know successful on the weekend. So I'm, I'm not sure where this this deck goes. It definitely has a lot of synergy and a lot of power powerful things that it can do. Um, I think your weak point is your mana. Um, you did get two more dual lands from uh, Magic 2020, which I think is helpful for sure. They are tap lands, but they scry. So I'm not sure how you know aggressive you can you can be. This this list is only playing to Temple of Mystery, so you know they they can't afford to play a bunch of tap lands. I don't know if the more mid range builds can you know, but uh, I think like man, this this deck would have killed for like. Fast lands or pain yeah. lands or something like that. True, true, true. Um, but yeah, that, that's unfortunately we got some some slower lands, and I, <laughs> I think like that may 
hurt the overall like longevity of these aggressive more I, uh, elemental builds, but I'm not sure. I don't disagree, but like some of these decks are making it work, and like even like this one playing like Temple of Mystery, you know what I mean? Just like yeah, I don't know how you, you it, like I I've been playing the decks with them, and sometimes I don't know how it's possible. I, I think like you're not you don't have any turn one plays right. You're not playing elves on this list, right? You, everything on your your deck starts at two or higher. So except for shock, like you you could potentially like playing a turn one temple turns off your your turn one, turn one shock, but it's only even up, you know matters for a few of the decks in the format. Shock, we we just talked about how shock isn't even at its best against you know this deck in particular sometimes, but um a lot of the 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 other decks that are floating around. So it's like. The amount of times where you have to make the decision based on the, t- the only the two temples is it's probably pretty low, and a lot of the times you might just be leading on like a tapped pain land or a tapped shock land or any something like that anyway on game one. So I, I'm sure that's probably why. If you're playing a list like this that's more mid range and is playing things like land War elves, then maybe you have more of a consideration of how many tap lands you can play. But I don't know. Three color mana bases in this format don't seem to be like the bee's knees if that makes any sense it's not free you know there's a cost to it you know we've we've been in some standard formats where it's it's it feels pretty free i don't think this is this is one of those unfortunately even though it like with the check lands the shock lands you would think it would be um but i think like we have a lot of complex color combinations right so you you're wanting to play a bunch of multicolor cards but also a lot of cards that have a lot of heavy like mana considerations you're wanting to play omnath but also cavalier of thorns <laughs> it's like i want to play all the colors and also a lot of them <laughs> so uh i think like that's why the mana in these decks just isn't as free as we've seen in like last time we had the the shock check you know mana base i think that there were a lot more we just had a lot more like multicolored cards that weren't so cost hungry. If if that uh if that makes any sense. No, it, it makes sense for Cause, sure. Because you know we can even talk about like Esper Hero, which actually shows up in eighth place. So there's kind of where we see our, our Teferi component. And um you know this list has actually even moved away from playing things like um uh, Bell Haunt. Um we we don't see that in this particular list. We actually we were seeing the elite, elite guard mage and um Tomebound Lich. Yeah, that that card like I, I think it's pretty pretty cool at seeing play. Um and I I'm not surprised like we we know that cards like absurd and like limited and typically uh, absurd cards and limited typically find their way into standard at some point in time. Um but uh this 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 deck also picked up a few other things. We have some disfigures showing up. Um uh and I think um, that might be the um, we have Aethergust on the sideboard, which obviously makes sense, and Noxious, Noxious Grasp. Grasp yeah. um, but I think that's it for the, the new M twenty cards. But a, a few decent pickups, and um, you know, Esper. When we take a look at the, like the metagame breakdown, it was split yeah, evenly there are between five heroes and five. Yeah, controls. so if you're just grouping Esper together, it was like the third most represented deck technically. Yeah, it's it's not dead. It's certainly still here. De- definitely not. Um, and, and I'll say like. The, this build I really do like because here, here the Precinct One is is pretty good against these elemental decks. Uh, Omnath can deal with it, uh, and like Chandra represents a problem for going wide. But if you can you know, work around those cards, it's pretty powerful. And like Tomebound Leech, like or Leech, I mean to say, if people are playing like a bunch of Leaf Kindreds and Incubation Druids, and, or, or sorry, all those are both Druids, like yeah, this is where I want to be. <laughs> you know what I mean? Go ahead, block it. Yeah, exactly. Like so, it, it's something that can always get through and is going to get you an advantage. Yeah, and this list is even playing something like Command the Dreadhorde as well to right. kind of take advantage of being able to loot, loot. on your deck. Yeah, that's right. pretty. That's pretty cool. I like that. That's an interesting version, um, for sure. Um, I, I like the the main deck's Kaya's Wrath as well, and the I assume like one more in the sideboard. Yeah. Um, I, I think like that's a, a a big thing, and we might be shifting into a format where something even like Time Wipe. Might be a good call as well because, like, team elementals yeah. and um, it, it, things that are playing to like a, a mid range board state, especially something like um, vampires, which is a bit grindier for sure. But you know, being able to still have access to a sweeper that doesn't necessarily like hurt you um, as bad as it hurts you know the the other opponent is probably uh, uh, something you might want to even look at. Um, uh, we're mentioning Orzhov Vampires. We do have two copies of those in the top eight. Fourth yeah. place, Zachary Keen, and uh, fifth place, uh, Dustin Taylor. Uh, and the, even the builds are, are fairly significantly different. Uh, so uh, the creature base is pretty consistent, though uh, Zachary Keen has uh, a one Vona Butcher of, uh, is it Megan? 
Megan. 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 In the main. And then a lot of Planeswalkers. Two Gideon Blackblade, two Johnny Adversary Tyrants, and four sort of the ubiquitous Soren Imperious Bloodlord. Um, you know, and, and I think, like, that's, you know, very interesting. We talked about these creatures, like, Knight of the Evan Legion and... Uh, and Adonis of Vanguard are a one-two punch of just like really tough to deal with creatures. Like it is, if you're blocking mostly, if you're like the, if you're a green base deck, Knight of the Ebon Legion is is just impossible. It feels impossible. It, it really does. Um, I do think I like Dustin Taylor's creature build a little bit better because instead of the main deck Vonas, he's playing a couple copies of Sanctum Seeker, which is sort of the vampire Hell Rider. Yeah. Uh, and I like that as, like, a secondary card to bring down with your Sorn. Like, if you go turn one Vampire, turn two Vampire, turn three Sorn, that. Like, your attack just, like, gets a lot more powerful, and you get to just keep, you know, keep going with that. Um, but I think both builds are interesting. Um, and it uh, just shows you, that, you know, again, I think how powerful Sorn is. But really, again, th- those one-drops, you know, of, uh, you know, Night of the Even, or even I keep doing that, Evan. Uh, and even, like, Sky Merger Aspirant just continues to just be a solid Savannah Lions. Um, because it flies pretty consistently in this deck too, and the, this is, this deck is definitely leaned more aggressively with playing a vicious conquistador. As oh well. yeah, one hundred percent. So you I have mean, twelve one drops effectively. But again, vi- again, I, I guess eleven. You're yeah. only playing three Legion landing. Uh, but a vicious conquistador is another card that you know when you look at the way these decks are being built right now. If your opponent's pl- trying, literally trying to play Leaf Druid, Risen Reef, like zero power creatures, one ones. Yeah, give me the one two. That's even when it gets blocked, it's still going to hit one. You know what yeah. I mean? I, I think that's I think that's a totally fine way to build right now. Even if you look at like mono blue aggro, it doesn't have a way to to you know consistently block those things outside of you. Know, you get a merfolk trickster, but it's one ones are doing the job. I, I don't mind that sort of building style at all to go a little bit lower. And again, I like Sanctum Seeker a lot. I like that sort of Hellrider effect uh, for vampires because I think even in mirrors, it's really swingy. Yeah, so I could see that. Um. I know that we should mention Bant Ramp, and I think did Bant Ramp win the classic? I feel like it also won the classic. Hold on here, I'm gonna click over there and do that. Um, yeah, Bant Bant Mass Manipulation uh, d- did uh, win the classic. So these, these sort of ramp decks that are ramping into um, again, you know, Entrance Melody, huge Hydroid Crises, and um, uh, you know, gigantic uh, mass manipulations. Uh, this is actually really close to the deck that I played at the. Um, at the MCQ with the you know, Nisses and Teferis. Uh, I do want to mention a card that's seeing a fair amount of play in some of these green decks, uh, Voracious Hydra. Yeah. Um, uh, I, Benjamin Riley piloted this deck to a sixth place finish, and uh, he actually wrote like a, a post on Reddit. And it was like, um, yeah, you know, Voracious Hydra kind of play, takes the a little bit of the place of the like uh, the melody, uh, the yeah, card. Right. Um, kind of similar effect, you know, deals with a threat and leaves you with one. Um, so he wasn't really sure how he felt that, about it at the the end of the the match, but like it's interesting. It's, it's, it's certainly an interesting card to to try, especially you know when you're looking at mono blue being in the format, because obviously like you get encountered by let's say a uh, like spell pierce or something like that. It's not something you have to worry about with this card. You still have to worry about the the hex proof. Uh, the, sure, sure, sure. But you still get a creature, right? You still have a voracious hydratist ha- at the end of the day. And, you know, maybe, like, if you know what they have, maybe the play is to double the counters instead and just, like, try, just try to have bash. a big... Yeah. It does trample. So you yeah, try just... to have a big guy. Um, I, I think what I like about this card is how it plays this role of... You said melody, which is true, but, like, like having some, like, that tempo removal spell is so important. And this can hit some things that melody has a harder time hitting depending yeah. on its power and toughness. You know what I mean? You know, this at three mana kills a Risen Reef. Yeah, Melody's five mana to get that reef. You know what I mean? So I, I think that's pretty important uh, because it you know, becomes a one-two. But with ramp, like it's like another good thing to ramp into. It's very good with Nissa. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You know, and you can just just represent like, okay, well, you know, here's a I, I put eight mana. This here's a sixteen, seventeen. So hope you got an answer for that. So I'm gonna call it a bunch of the, the you know, all the band ramp players uh, play play the big giant Hydra, you cowards. <laughs> Play the Hydra Legend, you cowards. Do it. <laughs> Do it. You're already playing, you know. What? It does make these cost four less. It's so you're, you're just, just playing seven Hydras in your list. Come on. Draw more cards. Kill more creatures. Do it. Wait, hold on here. Seven. Hydroid Crisis is, is a, a Hydra. Hydra. Okay, you're yeah. right. Okay. Well, Hydroid could be like. No, I understand. It's like I, a Hydra. I get it. Nice. All right. Yeah, do it. Yeah. Let's, do it. let's go Hydroid Trample. Or Hydra Trample. <laughs> do it, you cowards. Hell Hydra. Um. 
Um, I, I do want to point out that also versus Hydra has a very good interaction with Teferi. Like, if you're just using it as a removal spell, then he was like, bounce it, do it again. Yeah. <laughs> so. Um, uh, and then another card that uh, he talked about in his Reddit post was Shalai. Shalai just being, like, a fantastic magic card. Uh, definitely um, did a lot of, like, positive things with, uh, yeah, obviously, all the effects that it has. Giving all your stuff, high, you know, Hexproof is a, a big... Is is a big deal, um, and he was trying to figure out maybe trying to find a, a room for a third one somewhere within the oh, wow. within the deck. Yeah, I, I like Shalai when I play these lists too. Uh, again, Shalai with Nissa lets you do some really cool things, like where you can attack with the lands, and then you know you can tap them in combat to add counters to everything. And it gets really tough for your opponent to. It's like you can't. You get to attack and do that. It's like yeah, yeah and probably twice if I untap. So uh, yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty great. Um, I think like uh, he was thinking about trading the like the the because he, he is playing one in Transic Melody, cutting that and playing the third July. So I don't know. Um, just just some stuff that I remember like reading from uh, from his post when he when he did his tournament report. Sure, sure, so. Sure. Uh, in seventh place, we had Oliver Tomashko playing Boros Feather, and Feather is a deck that really, um, you know, it, it's not playing a ton of new cards, but the new card that it specifically got uh, is super powerful for it, and it's really helping it uh, come back up. And that's God's willing. Um, if, like, if we can look at any single card that looked at an archetype that existed in standard and gave it a push up, it's God's willing for Feather for sure. And you know, to be honest, like it, it's it's weird when you think about this deck, but Temple of Triumph. This deck is, is true. Is is one hundred percent a very mana hungry deck, and like it, it, all the Boros decks that have existed have been like, we are we are so demanding of our mana that we need to play like Guild Gates, right? And it's just like, okay, well, you don't have to do that anymore. You can actually play a pretty solid land. Um, and again, this is another deck that you don't necessarily have to interact turn one. Um, you could take that turn one off to set up because normally you are playing things like a turn behind they when they might show up like you might be playing your you know 10th district legionnaire on turn three or uh you're you're probably playing your feather on turn four so you can right. hold something up um so taking that 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 first turn you know to, to scry is is fairly effective and again you know much like the original heroic decks like scrying is super powerful in these lists because you can obviously shift all of the garbage to your your bottom all all the um Land, so you don't need any more, and like just be being able to repeat that with feather and do it over and over again, even with your lands, um, is is fairly effective, especially in the early turns where it's like I play this, put this land at the bottom, yeah, I don't right. see it again, I because I just want to keep drawing action. Yeah, and, and this deck does you know really benefits from those scries, like you said, like it it gets to scry off of you know. Now off of uh, Sheltering Light, God's Willing, and every time you target your 10th District Legionnaire, like, you can really craft your draws. So, oh, for sure. Um, the, 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 um, Dayless, or the, the metagame breakdown mentioned the Naya Feather decks, uh, and some of those builds are kind of interesting. They've, uh, some of them I've seen have played, like, um, they're either playing the, I'm going to forget it now, Gruul Spellbreaker. Yeah. Uh, some of them, most of them are playing the Green Enchantment, which I'm going to, I can't remember, like Cycle of Life or something like that? Yeah, Is that what it's you, called? When you target your own creature. You draw a card and whatever you, a creature. Uh, it's you scry, I think. No, no, whenever, when a creature comes into play under your control, it's oh, scry. You scry. When you target it with a spell, draw you, you, you cast, you draw yeah. a card. Okay. Uh, which is exactly some of the Feather wants to do. I don't, and then based on the results here, I still don't think it's worth stretching no, your mana you for. You should just be playing. Um, like, the, the mana is already so difficult in these lists I think you should just be playing Boros right um, like you're not you're playing Giant Growth not gonna really like or, or even a, that enchantment's like not gonna affect your board and there, there are plenty of good creatures to, to already be playing with this kind of archetype so I, I wouldn't try to to push it um, but I, I, I would love to play this list I think it's really really cool um, I'm sure it's it's probably fairly difficult to play because the you know heroic decks were fairly difficult to play back then and this is not as good as those decks even were yeah. so um, you really have to navigate pretty pretty deftly so um yeah so outside of the top eight we, we have civic nexus um showing up like a lot a ton uh, i just outside of the top eight i will say the most common like new card out of those decks is definitely either veil of summer or shifting ceratops which is getting a ton yeah. of sideboard play and uh yeah I, i'm glad that ross Merriam did well with it but I do not want to be the model blue player sitting on the other side of shifting ceratops. No, and, and, and being it like, is a beating. don't discount Temple of Mystery. To be honest, in no, these that's true. Oh, that's true. Okay, that's fair. I'm taking that for granted, and you're you're very right. 
You're very, very right. Getting, uh, playing a, a, you know, you you saw some of these lists that were already playing, like, Simic Guildgate. So, like, now you just get a strict upgrade, and it's, like, amazing in your deck. <laughs> um, so, I think, like, that it helps a lot, um, uh, along with, like, like Veil of Summer. Um, and, I, I mean, even, like, uh, looking at Dylan, Dylan Donegan's list, he's playing a uh, Mu Yan Ling. In the oh, side yeah, board. that was interesting. I wonder what that was for, but that's interesting. So... Lots of lots of stuff. I mean, I, I, oh, Aether Gust is another yeah. That card is another also, big thing. Like yeah. you get you get you know six hate cards out of your sideboard, which is fantastic. Um, but oh, excuse, oh, sorry, you get nine because she thinks Ceratops, of course. <laughs> um, so you get, just get a ton of stuff, and like, man, these decks are just pretty good. And I'm glad, like, I'm I'm like sad that it didn't win. Like, I'm honestly sad that it didn't win. So. Like, we couldn't see that this is going to be a problem. And, like, it's going to continue to be a problem, to be honest. It's not like Wizards is going to take time to do anything oh, about no, it. Oh, no, no. Now we just now we just live with it. And that's whatever. I, it's it's visible to play against, and that's just where it is. Yeah. Just no. concede quickly. I don't know what to tell you. Yeah, and it's, it's you know, it's only going to be here until the, the fall set comes out. So, and yeah. Archery. Hopefully, by then, we'll just have forgotten about it. But, um. I, I, you know, it's. It, I think like even though you know we just talked about being kind of blasé about um, you know course of twenty twenty, it, it, it did show itself to be somewhat impactful in, in a lot of different ways. You know, the, the hate cards are pretty much all seeing play, including the green one that we're like it was kind, was kind of, was kind of like not that impressive. Um, and you know, we're seeing some interesting new takes um, on archetypes that existed before. We were seeing some archetypes that have been kind of given their last hurrah uh, in mono blue. So, uh, I mean, it, it is doing a lot more than you would expect, I think, a typical core set to do. I don't disagree. Uh, I want to mention one more deck quickly yeah. because we already mentioned it. Band Flash, 13th yeah. play, or, uh, sorry, Simic Flash, uh, Brandon Dempsey. Uh, yeah, th- this this deck is kind of, like, just kind of beautiful the way these things are built. Four Spectral Sailor, four Brineborn Cutthroat, four Merfolk Mi- or Trickster, four Field Mystic, four Nightpack Ambusher, which that card is a house in this deck. Yes. Then two Syncopate, four and Summon, four Essence Scatter, two Negate, four Sinister Sabotage, plus Lands. So that is officially zero cards you have to cast on your turn. Most of the times we've seen other builds of like, yeah. you know, Simic Flash, or you have to play something on your Nope. Zero. None of it. Don't care. And this deck is kind of difficult to navigate against. Um, if you don't have a good removal spell, Brineborn Cutthroat gets real big real quick in this deck. Um, but Nightpack Ambush is a, is a blowout, and the way that it operates, I've already seen the sequencing happen a lot. Like, the go-to removal spell has consistently been Lava Coil when you're red-based, right? And Lava Coil deals with Nightpack Ambusher real well. Except, of course... They're going to cast the end of turn, and you have to wait till your turn to cast Lava, Lava Coil. And I can't tell you already how many times in Arena I've been like, oh, Lava Coil this, and I got a response, I'll flash another Nightpack Ambusher. And that's a 5-5, five five. and you're like, please no. No, I don't want that. Please don't do that. <laughs> that's the opposite of what I wanted. Like, in addition to the fact that you could probably just counter the Lava Coil, but when they get to counter the Lava Coil by just adding a 5-5 five five to the board, that's upsetting. I don't like that. So, um, yeah, it's a powerful card. The sideboard plan is interesting, going into, like, a bunch of Carnage Tyrants and Growth Chamber Guardians. So it's like, oh, you figured out my Flash plan, so here's just better creatures. <laughs> um, yeah. But it's one way to go about it. It's certainly a deck that, like, you know, Flash decks appeal to people for so many reasons, but these these aren't bad. Yeah, I think, you know, this is another deck when you look at it and go, oh, okay, well then, you know, Temple of Mystery obviously makes sense. You know, we, we saw similar sort of um, uh, Simic Tempo decks before this that, had a little bit of steam uh, towards the the beginning of the war, the spark, but kind of petered out. Um, but I, you know, there you definitely have a lot. And you, something you can you can say about this is like, so Merfolk tr- Trickster is rotating. You know, Syncopate is that one? When would we get that one? Yeah, that one's going to be rotating. Um, I don't know if Essence Scatter is. I don't. Did we just get get that in something? I can't remember. Say that again. Essence Scatter. Did it get reprinted? Yeah, I it don't did know. Not. I don't know if it didn't. So that no, one, that one not. might be leaving. Um, and like your like some of your four year lands. So like a lot of the stuff is is still staying around or going to have something that could potentially be used to replace it. And maybe maybe you you have to look at your your sideboard and re- replace a few slots here and there, but. Um, 
a lot of what's going on here is still going to be something that you could potentially do when rotation happens, maybe in a different way, unfortunately. You know, you do lose a creature, which is hard in these kind of decks. So I, I'm not sure, but um, yeah. Interesting. Yeah, very much so. And, um, you know, just play just play Bant and play the, you know, Tolsmir and <laughs> just just do those sort of things. Find him, figure out a way to give him Flash, play Teferi, I don't know. <laughs> figure it out. Um, yeah, and, and, like, there's even other weird decks, like, hanging around here. Um, it, it's not represented in the Classic either, though. Cla- the Classic has Azorius Aggro, which is, like, mono-white, so, like, that's still a thing. But there's even, like, a blue-white Skies deck that's been, like, hanging around. Yeah. Um, that's playing Empyrean Eagle and uh, Wing- Winged Words. And you you still have, um, you, you still have Favored Winds in the format. Yeah, you have Favorable, yeah, favorable, favorable Winds. Favorable Winds, yeah. Yeah, and uh, Dungeon Guys. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, there's a lot of cool decks you can play right now. So, and, and that's, like, some of them have been like spirit focused. Yeah, as well. like Supreme. So you can uh, well, play Supreme uh, Phantom. Pyrian Eagle is a spirit, a, a spirit bird. Nice, so, perfect. So yeah, um, so yeah, yeah. Some of them have Supreme Phantom uh, and Danny Phantom and like a whole <laughs> all bunch, of, all of Phantoms. and the Phantom. So you have that weird three mana, uh, the 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 Spectral Hangman that, that exists as well. Yes, the Spectral Hangman. Uh, so, uh, the ones about humans are real quick. Humans, modern. I mean, yeah, modern. I was uh, looking at the humans list. I mean, like humans play modern, so that makes sense. I like looking at hu- that. Actually, sounds weird if I say I like looking yeah, at don't, humans. Don't don't do that. That's I weird. appreciate that's weird. The human form. If you are worried about the Waxy cops showing up, I'm pretty sure the real cops will show up for that one. The the precog because <laughs> I haven't looked at anybody yet. <laughs> I guess that's true, <laughs> but I will soon. Uh, n- n- no, oh no, okay, no, don't do that. So, um. I don't want to spend too much time on Modern. I know we've been kind of long. and This is the first tournament since the, the you know, Hogak banning. Yeah, this is Hogak uh, the, the, the bridge from below banning, I should say. Yeah, well, that's right. And, like, we, we see the format resettling back into what it was. Eldrazi Tron did win, Miles Wilson, but that deck had been gaining a bunch of... Uh, Steam recently, for sure. Yeah. Uh, multiple copies of Humans, multiple copies of Is It Phoenix. Um, we do have an Azorius Control, a couple copies of Grixis Urza in the top 16, which I did say was a, a thing that might come back. Um, one copy of Azorius Spirits, so, you know, go Spirits. Proud go Spirits, of you. go. Um, they're playing Unsettled Mariner, so there you go, Morgan. That card is, you know, sweet. Um, card is sweet. Uh, and we had Burn. Um, you're just a cool, cool Burn deck here with, uh, Skewer the Critics in, in fourth place, so keeping them honest. But, yeah, I mean, the format looks essentially where it was. It's almost like you didn't change it. A ton. You just took out one problem. So, um, no, we still have one, two, three, four copies of Is It Phoenix in this top sixteen. So it's probably a little underrepresented. Maybe they did it. Maybe they fixed the format. Probably not. Oh, okay. I don't think with with the information that we got from the, the, the sort of last banner restricted update. You don't have to ban explain me. I, I just think like <laughs> uh, you know we're gonna have to settle on the idea that. Um, you know, it, I, yeah, honestly, I think these results are probably some like better than we could have hoped. Um, we, in the most represented deck in the top 16, we don't have any metagame data, but is, is it, what is it Phoenix, um, with four copies and then we have humans with three and everything else is like a, a one of or a two of. Yeah. We have two of Burn. We have a Colossal Eldrazi list. We have a couple of Eldrazi Tron lists. A couple of Gr- Grixis Urza lists. Um, and then like some some weirdo one offs. If anything, like it's not as diverse as we're, we're typically used to, which is certainly you know, something you can state. Um, but we also don't see like Dredge, which is surprising. That is surprising. We don't see um, like traditional Tron. That is not surprising. That deck has been it, I mean, back I think, burned for a while. I think Odrazi Tron is kind of they they switch off. Yeah, you that, know? I guess that's true. Um, I, and uh, you know, I I really thought that Odrazi Tron was sort of preying on, um, preying on the Hogak lists, and like that's why it was being like so popular to to see that maybe that's not the case, and it's just like good again because of the things you can do with um, Karn the Great Creator, and maybe. Maybe people who just realize like that card is, is super busted still. So, um, may- maybe that's just what we are, are going to be seeing going forward. Um, 
something that people were were definitely saying like Eldrazi Tron can play creatures more effectively, which helps it against like planeswalker decks, things like you know blue white control and whatever. Sure, have yeah, you. no, being able to you know hit 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 those big planeswalkers is important. Yeah. Oh, Jund. There's no Jund. Yeah, that is surprising too because it's um, been it's definitely gaining some popularity. Yeah, I mean but... it's it's the whole drive why well, not the whole drive but a large portion of the drive why like Ren and Six is a ridiculously expensive card now, yeah. and to not see it show up is just kind of weird. Now it's a classic, you know. You can only take you know derive so much information about the overall meta. I'm excited to see what happens, uh, you know, in in Columbus in a couple of weeks. I'm excited to see what happens at the Pro Tour in a couple of weeks. Uh, yeah, really I see, think that's like, where I'm just kind of sitting as waiting yeah, for the Pro Tour. Is, is seeing where Modern is actually truly truly sort of settling. Uh, now, the Pro Tour, uh, I do expect a lot of it. Is it Phoenix, to be honest? So that that one, I feel like, is going to be a little bit tilted um, and a little bit biased towards, like, the pros just wanting to play, like, the best blue-red cantrip deck there is, which is going to be Is it Phoenix. <laughs> yeah. So that's what I expect. I always expect to see a lot of humans because it's just, like, a default, like, good deck. You know what I mean? Like, people are just like, oh, I'm just going to play humans. Because that's what I played at the last Modern Pro Tour, so why would I change? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, there, there definitely is a lot that is, is going on. And, um, uh, you know, this isn't, true, isn't truly groundbreaking. And there's a lot of weird things that we're just not seeing. This almost feels like the same metagame that we had before Hogak, just with no Hogak decks. Yeah, it's kind of weird. I, and, I guess and, and, and those decks aren't entirely gone. No, so. they, they, they certainly aren't. Um Oh, uh, no. And we, the other thing we don't see, we obviously had the London Mulligan for this tournament. Right. Um, no uh, Neoform combo as well. That is interesting. No, really no combo at all, uh, to, to, to be honest. Not saying that, I, I guess, like, if you're, I, I don't know where you classify Grixis Urza. I don't know if you classify that as an artifact deck or a prison deck or a combo deck. It's kind of all of them. Um you know, it's a, a jack of all trades within within those lists, um, but nothing even like Storm, you know, showing up and having like potentially just people slipping on graveyard hate and, and trying to like spike it with that. Um, again, just kind of like a weird like lack of diversity here in the top sixteen, um, uh, in my opinion, and um, a lot of decks that were gaining steam that we expected to kind of continue to do so just didn't. Yeah. Know. Yeah. I mean, you can draw, I do want to mention something about the modern open though, that is worth talking about when you asked uh, about modern classic. Oh, or sorry. Modern classic, sorry. Yeah. When you mentioned like feeling about like the new set and that sort of thing, I think this is still a really good standard format. There's a lot of obviously really cool decks, but the open had less than 400 people in it. Mm-hmm. The classic for standard had 83 people in it. Ah, the modern classic had 250 people in it. That's wild. So you're talking about an open that, uh, Almost was how I'm gonna phrase this: the open as small as a classic, or the classic as big as an open. <laughs> right. Uh, but like, that's really interesting to think about, and it's frustrating because like those are the kind of numbers that will stop Star City from having standard opens again. Um, so it's also like week one standard, and, and I, it, it is. And like maybe people again here. Here's the thing: maybe people who got all these like Modern Horizons cards have no desire to buy standard cards. They just paid for these expensive Ren and Sixes. It's true. You know what I mean? That, that, um, that's definitely a consideration. And vice versa. Like, like if you look at a bunch of those decks, like, well, if I want to play modern, not only do I have to have these cards, but now I have to have Ren and Sixes, or I have to have Urzas, or I have to have um, Aria Flames. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. um, I think it's interesting that you know, you may they you know, may be eating each other's lunch a little bit, which is interesting. All right, let's uh, let's finish up. Let's finish up. Yeah. So the last thing we want to talk about is. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't say the question verbatim, but um, um, over the weekend, again, we, we did talk about Aaron Barish um, uh, winning the uh, entire tournament with Mono Red. And um, there was some controversy, uh, as, as to be expected with Magic tournaments these days, um, regarding some... I, I want to phrase it delicately. Like, do you want to say like questionable plays or uh, I mean, was, outright was, game rules violations? It was a game rules were, violation. Yeah. That's what GRB. So, that's what it was. Yeah. So outright games were violations that were were happening during a match that was being streamed. Um, uh, Aaron had uh, a frenzy out and played um, live the stage from from her hand. Yeah. And this wasn't uh, caught, and it was. Uh, definitely something I know. I, I didn't look back and watch watch the clip. I'll be perfectly honest with that. Um, but I know that Aaron was definitely playing. Like they, they were they definitely were up a game already, and um, her board state was 
obscene. Like sure. she was winning that match yes. well before that happened. Uh, yes. So, so like it was. If if you're looking at it as like cheating, it's a weird time to cheat. <laughs> so I, I will say that. Like this is. Um, I, I, here's the thing. I, I think the reason I put this as the question of the week, and I didn't really put, I didn't put a question down. I just asked, I just put down, why is the community a big pile of blank? Because um, this erupted. Now, granted, we've had this happen before, and mm-hmm. I know we've talked on here before, and I wanted to sort of use this as a time to be critical, maybe of at least myself a little bit, because there have been times where I have seen these clips and gone, oh, man, that's really bad. And, I, and maybe it's assumed to 10. I, what I, so I guess I want to balance these things, because... This whole issue did make me question how quickly I think at times I have been like, oh, well, that person, that's cheating. You know, we've talked on here before about our own errors. Um, I know I saw a couple of people like Cedric Phillips were tweeting out like, I once did this. That happened. You know, I, I've said it on here before. I, I once in a back-to-back weekend tournament where day, Saturday was a PTQ and Sunday was an IQ, uh, in the top eight of the IQ, I cast Gifts Ungiven as Intuition. See, normally you cast Gifts Ungiven to get three Wrath Spells in the fourth card, which is normally Path to Exile or Time of the Reinforcements. I did the inverse and cast it for three Path to Exile on Wrath. Because I, in my brain, I said, I need a Path to Exile, and I cast it that way, and my opponent resolved it that way, and put a Wrath and a Path in my hand. And it wasn't until one of the players on his side was like, wait, how did you cast that Gifts? And I was like, oh, like Intuition. Uh, that's how I did that. And here's the thing. I proceeded to win that match. I was like, I'm not conceding this. I'm sorry. Like, that sucks. But, like... It, it you know it is and I felt bad about it like but I wasn't I wouldn't I never thought myself as cheating there I definitely like broke the rules and cheated in the moment yeah. um but like the the rules you know talk about cheating as intent right and you have like Ricky Hayashi here who investigated the situation is like yeah there was no intent and you can watch the clip and know that there's no intent because that game is over mm-hmm. it's already over um what I think is terrifying is the amount of vitriol that. Aaron received on Twitter and any other all forms of social media, Reddit, whatever else. And we also talk about the witch hunt and like their you know, and, and sometimes it's super successful. We've seen how these have brought you know, um, you know, I think of what's his name, uh, Betcher, for example. You know, sometimes you know, it is good to be it is good to be critical of these things. Like they happen, um, but we've also seen the flip side of that. You know what I mean? Like I, you know, as somebody who knows like Kent Ketter, you know, at least did know him pretty well. He's out in Seattle now and does whatever he wants. But like, you know. I, this is a good, good human being. You know what I mean? Like he got you know, on the other end of that. So, and, and his play was a lot more questionable than hers was like, it, it was a mistake. It's a mistake. Mm-hmm. And people were not just like criticizing for it though, like ripping her apart. Okay. Now there's some really gross undercurrents for that. Yeah. The, the, you know, I, I had, I didn't investigate, um, as far as like, some of the things that I heard about. So these are things just that, that I heard about, but they're from people that I, you know, trust and follow on, on Twitter. But that some of the, the reasons and how people were deciding to go about being critical of, of this were fairly, were not motivated by trying to suss out a cheater, but they were motivated by other leanings that these people may or may not have had yeah. uh, towards, towards Aaron. And, and I, that if, if that's, if that's true, um, and to be honest, I, I wouldn't be surprised. I, mean, I posted some stuff on our discord of like pictures of some threads where it just yeah. like, I, there was a guy like threatening to fight Todd Anderson, like come to my house and fight me. Like, because, and they were just, like, tweeting stuff at Aaron, just, like, awful things. And then, like, a few hours later, like, oh, I said some things I really mean to say. Nope, you typed them and sent them. Here's the thing about the internet. You could type it a hundred times and never send it. You chose to do that. That's true. That's so weird. So. I'm not saying you shouldn't apologize. It's good to apologize. But it saying is. that, like, that's not me, that's tougher. <laughs> that <laughs> that's is tougher. a little bit more difficult. Um, but all I'm saying is, like, if... if these were the the motivations that you you had to to be a bad actor in this sort of situation and and not and, and try to to do things hurtful to 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 Aaron. Um, I think like that's 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 a pretty nasty thing to to do. Like there's a difference between like being being critical about sloppy play and like having your own thoughts about it and and, and you know just being a jerk. 
Yeah, but I, I agree. There's other, the, but there's also things like just being a hateful human being, and that's just gross. It's just weird. It, like, and I think what's really frustrating about that is, like, one, again, it's good to be critical of the error. And, like, Aaron came out and was like, hey, this was, like, really wrong, this and that. Like, was really this forward is, about this it. This is, like, unacceptable, and this happened. Like, it, yeah. it happened. You know what I mean? We can point to so many videos of people playing an extra land, this and that. The key here is, like, one, the investigation from, you know, head, head guy who's head judge of Pro Tour. So, like, maybe trust that. But, like, the overlap of people tearing Aaron down who also were like, I need you to show me the receipts on Yuya yeah. at a pro tour. Mm-hmm. It's ridiculous. You know what I mean? Because like, like when you even compare the two and I mentioned Betcher, like Betcher got the ban he did because like he was manipulating decks. He was using shuffling techniques to manipulate decks. You know, Yuya got kicked out of the hall of fame ostensibly for a pattern of patterns. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like, Mar- purposely marking your deck like like there's such a thing as like a cheat of opportunity right it was where you make a mistake and you know it and you don't say anything about it and that's cheating that's intent right yeah but like but grvs are literally grvs for a reason yeah you know what I mean like people miss things we, we uh, the mcq that we played at uh, a few weeks ago or a month whatever ago like i went back and watched my camera match right and there's definitely a point where my opponent had a four four steam uh, you know runaway steam kid and i blocked it with a two power creature and in post combat, he removed counters from that to add mana to his mana pool and kept going. And neither of us realized it should be dead. And I and I said on this cast, like, yeah, I play arena too much. Like it marks the damage for me. It's lazy, right? My opponent wasn't cheating. No. Did they cheat? Did they break the rule? Yeah, they had a GRV, but it never got caught. We didn't notice it. I don't think that person's a cheater. Yeah. You know what no. I mean? Like, I, it's just one of those things where, like, you have to look at the whole thing. Remember it. Be dil- be vigilant both as a player and anywhere else. Yeah. Right. If you see the pattern, right. If if you are able to construct a pattern about a player later, maybe. But you do that in a way like you people talk all the time about these receipts or show me the investigation, this or that. It's like you're not detectives. You're just a, a an a hole. Like I don't know what else to say. <laughs> you're just a, a rando on Twitter. Yeah. Like, like you know, that, you're, you're it's not no your gum de- shoe. Yeah, like it's not your decision to make. Um, rushes over here trying to. Dig the carpet. Dig, dig through the couch. I don't think you're gonna or get carpet there. Carpet couch. I don't think you're gonna get there. There you go. That's smart. I'm going to China. <laughs> that's not even how it works. Bro. That's, not, that's not how it works, man. You got to go through like there's core. Nah. And, and like it's frustrating because I know that like we sit here and have these conversations like on here, and there's a large. And here's the thing. So I know for a fact, and this was said on Twitter multiple times. A lot of this initially came from like MTG headquarters. You know what I mean? Like that. Just love that guy. Just awesome. Glad he's still around. Yo, if anything that you are getting behind came from that person, you're on the wrong side of everything. So, like, stop it. Right. And I don't care but, if we lose like, a listener for me saying that. Well, no, but here's the thing. Like, those that's the kind of people who'd be like, well, well, you got on your podcast so you could, I don't know, White Knight or uh, what's the other one? Uh, what's the other one where you, like, pretend to be moral? Oh, no, I can't remember. What is it? Virtue signaling? Virtue signaling. That's it. Oh. The the lights on then I guess don't be a crappy person yeah it's not hard I I will not I will never understand Twitter as a place where like I can get on here like this is larger than magic where I sure. I can get on here and send the the most hateful vitriolic mess oh wait <laughs> I know exactly where it comes from that's made myself real angry <laughs> but but like in all serious it's like these are human beings. You know, and I think like what's frustrating is like you know, social media as a whole like has taught us to essentially you know we we, we disassociate. You know what I mean? Like we those aren't people. You know, into yeah. screen. Who cares? But like, if you are a part of the magic community, you go to opens and stuff. Like, you've met Aaron before. You may play it against her. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You see these people. You know, this is it is crazy to me. You know what I mean? How just how, how many people I know even just like. It's the smallest fraction, but I, it's like a familiar face. You know what I mean? Just like, oh, the, it's like, you know, you've seen these people yeah. walk, breathe, be humans. Why, why would you treat them in a way that you would be appalled if you were being treated? Because, because Mike, they're a savage cheater and they deserve to be treated I guess like so. garbage. I, again, like, I, clearly, I, maybe that's the perfect crime where you only cheat in games where you are a hundred percent ahead of your opponent. Light years ahead. Like I, you said, you didn't watch the video. That's fine. Just go pull. Don't even click play on the video. Pull up and it has the image of the video, and you can see the thirty permanents on her side of the board to the lands and two things on this, on, on our opponents. Nope. 
Nope, that w- I don't think it was live. The stage did it. <laughs> don't think so. Don't think, don't think that that's what it was. I'm guessing we were getting there. Either way, <laughs> I just I, I I have been very angry at like you know habitual cheaters who haven't gotten punished enough. You know, we've we've ranted about Burton Cheney. who got so many things here, but never once, ne- never once did I like open up Twitter and just be like, well, time to threaten this human being in a very aggressive way. No, I've sat on this podcast and said ban cheaters. You know what I mean? Like. If you're upset about something and you really think that you have a point to make, talk to the appropriate people in an appropriate fashion for it. But otherwise, shut up. I wish people would just treat it like treat it like you're in like elementary school again. And like Twitter should always be your inside voice. Always your inside voice. <laughs> you're talking to a teacher, and if you call that teacher any sort of X names, you make a little game. You know, make a little three three like chart like whatever three column graph. Where if you combine these things into a spicy, you know, insult sandwich, just any of those things that would get you put in timeout, just you can't say those. You can't just you just don't. And then learn to use your words, again, like an elementary student. Yeah, pretty much. Um, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I think like when you're looking at a lot of it, it does. It, it definitely feels like there is um, just some some fishy about where, where a lot of it's coming from uh, yeah. and it just, it doesn't feel good. Like it doesn't feel like, you know, obviously oh, no. like it's never should feel good, I guess, but it doesn't feel like <laughs> it doesn't feel motivated by here's the thing though. You, you, you're absolutely right. Because when you say feel good, it feels, it is satisfying when someone who has cheated gets caught. Like it, it, there, there is a satisfaction to that. You know, we, we, we can all be a part of that where it's like, okay, you know, there is there is catharsis because yeah. of these things. But again, like you you if you're going to put one one mistake into this then you're all we're all cheaters because every single one of you has made a mistake that you have I guarantee you have drawn like a cyborg card and like either considered or just didn't call a judge, right? Cuz you already won the game. Like the game's already over. What does it even matter? You, you, these are all these are all close. honestly. That's a bigger. That's a bigger cheat than what you know, Barrage did. So like, these are the kinds of things. Like, oh, you played an extra land. You know what I mean? I, you've done this. You've done this. Magic's a hard game. Yeah. Okay. It, it, uh, especially, especially at its uh, at its highest levels. Uh, those sleeves. I don't know. They were marked in very specific places. But I need the receipts. I need more information from yeah. you, Watsy, because you you couldn't have do it. Couldn't have done it. But this person wins <laughs> Star City Open, and they're a monster. Don't you see, Morgan? No, I uh, I don't. I I could go on and on about the stuff that oh. I just hate. So like you again, virtue signaling, right? Like all that kind of stuff. Like I'm, we're not gonna tweet at her. I'm not gonna be like, hey, hey, we did you assault. That's not what this is. Be a decent no. human being. Yeah, just be a decent human being. Just look at context. Like look at look at the context. Trust trust people that are experts in their field. So trust judges. Trust. People that are, don't don't. But I, I didn't I, get to interview Ricky myself. No, and like here here's the thing. Like, oh man, the judges they're on the take, man. I don't know. Like, like you gotta, <laughs> got paid. That's like, sweet, sweet Star City. This is morning. the thing that bothers me in current society. Is like you present people with like experts in the field, like trusted things, facts, figures, numbers, and it's always like they always have to like jump through this weird like. Uh, 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 Illuminati like <laughs> conspiracy theory about like why this is how you're wrong and they they don't have the wherewithal inside of them to like hear the words that are coming out of their mouth or they're typing out they're just like I presented like an Occam's razor sort of solution where it was the, the simplest answer is often the easiest and you are telling me that like aliens are the reason why like your tap water doesn't taste good anymore and it's like i'm just like it's probably the fluoride and they're like well the fluoride's rot your brain so that's why you're thinking like this why don't you have your tinfoil hat on you weirdo <laughs> and i'm the weirdo so like stop it if you're doing that if you're like continually jumping through hoops when facts are presented to you like stop it There's, it's not some like deeper hole that you have to find i could vaccinate my kids but jenny mccarthy's like so pretty and she's so pretty <laughs> You can't get that pretty without being so smart about vaccines. Yeah, but maybe I'd be that pretty, too, if I did all these damn vaccines in my body. <laughs> I'm a polio, but I also don't have good looks. Yeah, get them out. Can I want to be hot. 
<laughs> and dying of polio. I saw I saw Captain America. He went in that iron lung and came out hot. Yeah. Put me in that waffle maker for people. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I think it's enough signaling for us. Oh, my God. Hey, did you know that the, uh, f- the first reported... Uh, um, Measles case? Uh, I thought, yeah, measles case in Ohio came out of this. So cool. Come to Ohio. We have measles. Everywhere's going to have measles, man. Yeah, I know. But we'll look real fine. So fine. So hot. The hottest looking measles hazard. <laughs> measles. Measles havers in the world. You've <sighs> never seen measles this sexy. <laughs> <laughs> Good oh, lord. They're hot, ready to pop. <laughs> oh, 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 gross. Gross. Is that the show, Morgan? I'm dying inside. Oh, yeah. We're both dying inside, of folks. Of the measles. <laughs> Eventually. More than likely. So. Oh, well. Well, that's life. Um, <laughs> we lost, I, I hope we lost viewers. <laughs> oh, whatever, viewers, man. I hope we lost viewers because they shouldn't be watching us. That's creepy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I don't know. Listeners, if, if we made you feel uncomfortable with this show, um, too bad. I don't know. I'm going to tell you. That's, this is how we feel about life. Just wait till next week. We're up in it now every yeah. week. Uh, just even more and more uncomfortable. <laughs> um, but that's going to be uh, everything for us uh, this week. Um, this weekend, uh, you can definitely watch some magic, though. We're, uh, there's, they're going to be at uh, there, as if you know. Star City Games is going to be in Philadelphia having a team-constructed tournament. And then there's also going to be Magic Fest Denver. Um, which is going to be standard. Now, to be fair, I don't know if Denver is actually going to have coverage, but you can at least read about it, I guess. Um, but that's going to be what's happening over this weekend. And, of course, San Diego Comic-Con. Um, I don't think the panel's being um, uh, streamed, but I imagine there's plenty of people on the aforementioned Twitter that'll be there and be tweeting out some stuff that happens from it. And then they said that there'll be a post on the Magic Home um, HQ once they announce everything that's going to have the same information that's going to be in the panel. So there you go. All right. Well, if you want to reach out to us, which you may after this episode, I guess, um, you can do so in various methods. And uh, we if may you, or may if not you're respond. upset at us, only tweet at Morgan. <laughs> only me. I'm at, I don't have time. I'm at Morg War Marshall. So feel free to yell at me, I guess. Um, but if you want to tweet at the show, it's your end step is the username and it's at your end step when you, when you tweet at us, uh, we also have an email address, um, at your end step at gmail.com and then Facebook, facebook.com slash at your end step. Um, if you're listening to us, uh, via a podcast app that lets you leave a rating or a review, please feel free to do so. Um, we feel that we're a, a five-star podcast and we hope you agree. Um, if you're listening to us via legit MTG, thank you so much for picking up the show and check out some of the articles they have on there and their web store. Um, you can also I uh, check out our um uh, our excuse me our other sponsor uh Comic Town at worldofcomictown.com again keep uh um uh, an eye on their page and check out uh, uh black white and red all over um if you are interested in their comic book podcast well again thank you so much for listening and we'll catch you guys next time and you have a great one bye.